episode of Momo Makes. I'm your girl Momo. I do DIYs, upcycles, and sewing projects. Today's project is a very special one. It's a love letter to Simone Rocha. If you don't know yet about Simone Rocha, have you been living under a rock? She recently did a collab with H&M. As soon as that collection hit the internet, look, everything was sold out, and I was hoping to get a piece of that action, but unfortunately, I missed it. Simone Rocha is known for her youthful, rebellious aesthetic, with an emphasis on use of materials like tartan and tulle and brocade. In her work, you can see a lot of frills, voluminous sleeves, embellishments, grosgrain ribbons. In today's project, I'm using all of these elements and I'm creating my own unique look. So today's project is my love letter to Simone. I took inspiration from her choice of materials, embellishment, grosgrain ribbons, and created a dress to celebrate the arrival of spring. So hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications, and let's get started. My design is inspired by various aspects of Simone Rocha's signature elements. I'm going to be using a 3D floral tool and a multi-layered construction. I'm planning to incorporate princess seams in the bodice for a feminine shape, shoulder frills for a light summery feel, voluminous sleeves for a very modern look, and grosgrain ribbon as well as faceted glass beads for embellishments. I'm making two dresses in this project, the main dress which will be made with the 3D floral tool and an inner dress which is going to be made of cotton material for the lining. I'm going to be making one princess seam bodice pattern that I will use for the bodice of the main dress and I will adapt it and extend it vertically for the inner dress. The term princess seam originated in the 1880s and to simplify, it is rounded seams that go over the fullness of the bust, extending down and tucking in the waist darts to closely fit the waist. This emphasizes the bust and shape of the waist without any visible darts. The main dress will have princess seamed bodice and a tiered skirt with two tiers. I will adapt the basic sleeve pattern to make elbow length puffy sleeves. The shoulders will have frills made with multi-layered strips of tulle and I will be finishing those with glass beads. Although princess seams can be made from a basic sloper, they're not that hard but if you want you can use these store-bought patterns for your convenience. you need for this project are two yards of cotton fabric for the inner dress we're gonna need two yards of the 3d floral fabric so this fabric I got at Joann's and it was very expensive so I just bought like two yards just to try out what I'm gonna make with it but the width of the fabric was about 64 inches I'm kind of a shorty so it kind of worked out you would need 12 yards of tool 12 yards is quite conservative estimate uh, if you can buy the whole bolt that would be more than sufficient I decided to line my fabric with four layers of tulle for the embellishments you're gonna need about 10 yards of ribbon you would also need faceted beads because we are making a Simone Rocha dress how can we not have faceted glass beads as embellishments since I'm going to use the princess seams as the uh, basic overall structure pattern for this dress I just cut out the top part of the princess seam bodice and I'm going to use that and extend it down to make my inner lining dress so I'm, I just cut out the bodice piece and then I just extended the lines all the way down to give it a little more shape I cut out the shape of the darts from the two panels so when they connect the place of the dart is going to be cut out from it to stitch these two panel, just line up the curve. The curve part is a little more difficult, so it is better to pin it just to be more exact where your stitch lines are going to be and just stitch it down. To hold the shape of the seams, I'm also going to do an overlining stitch just to make it stay. 
Once all the panels are completed, I'm going to attach the shoulders. That is pretty much the standard process of attaching the pieces of a princess seam dress or a blouse. You start with the panels, you attach the curves first, you figure out all the panels, the front and the back first. Uh, once you have the two front and the back pieces, then you attach them at the shoulder seams and that gives you the structure of the dress. You've stitched down the side panels and your princess seam dress is pretty much ready. You can finish off the armholes and the neckline and that's pretty much it. You could also make a chemise or a summer dress with the same pattern. So if you came to this video looking for inspiration or a tutorial on how to do princess seams, this is what you came for. Thank you for watching. To finish off the armholes, I'm using bias tape. Unfortunately, I forgot to pick up the exact matching color for the pink dress and I'm using a slightly lighter color that I already had, but I think it's gonna be okay because you won't be able to see it. So here's the dress. I hope you like it. This is the inner lining dress. As you can see that there is definitely a dart shape happening right underneath the boobs and it's giving the dress a little more shape. Although it's kind of loose but it does look structured and that's kind of what I want. to cutting out the 3d floral fabric i gotta be honest with you this was super intimidating for me because this fabric was just so expensive i was dying. i had so much anxiety cutting out this fabric but eventually i was like you know what you gotta take the risk you gotta make something you gotta move ahead with it and i just took a deep breath and I just put my scissors through it and I don't know how it happened but actually it came out. So remember when we were making the pattern I did not cut out uh, two different patterns for the inner dress and the outer dress and I just cut out the bodice piece. That This is now coming in handy for me because the bodice piece is actually the top of the dress for the main dress so I'm just going to lay that out and I'm just going to cut out my nice fabric. The good thing about the 3D floral fabric is that it is transparent, it is dual material so I'm placing my pattern underneath it so I can actually see where the flowers are because I think in this case lining up the flowers in such a way that they're not cutting each other or there's a continuation of the overall floral pattern is kind of important to this dress. Once I cut out the center panel I had to figure out where the side panels are gonna be and how the floral placements are going to be because I wanted all the flowers to match up. So I just laid out the center panel as well as the side panels underneath the floral fabric and I lined up where the flowers should have lined up and I just cut that out. <laughs> I was hyperventilating at this point because what if I did it wrong but you gotta move forward. If, if you want to make something you have to take that risk, you have to move forward. Done is better than perfect, so I had to get it done. And that's what my message to you is, if you are feeling really anxious about cutting your good fabric, just practice it on muslin or practice it on uh, Walmart pre-cuts that are like $2 for like four yards. And just go for it because practice makes perfect. But at the same time, done is better than perfect, so you gotta get it done. So I wanted blouse on big giant sleeves, just like Simone Rocha does. She does drop shoulder and big sleeves, but unfortunately I'm heavy at the top, so 
that kind of a style does not really look good on me. So for me, a, a more structured shoulder that sits higher up, a bigger sleeve, makes more sense and that's what I'm going with. So I cut out a basic sleeve pattern, but I'm going to extend it. I'm adding about six to eight inches. Those six to eight inches are going to be in the middle of the sleeve, this part. When you make gathers, this is where you need the extra fabric and it is going to pop. Moving on to the bodice, this is pretty simple. I wanted the back to be open. At this point, I had actually not decided if I had wanted to put in a zipper or I wanted it to be a simple dress but upon further inspection of the original Simone Rochat dress there is a center seam in the back so I'm just gonna go with that and then at the end I will see if I need to put in a zipper or not. Spoiler alert I didn't know. <laughs> this was such a complex project I was like Oh my god, can I just skip the zipper? And I did eventually, so but I'm gonna show you that in a second. I'm gonna use the two fabric layers and I'm going to cut all of those out. So for that, I am using the, the pattern that I've cut out. I've layered the two fabric four folds. Um, it's very light material, you probably can't see it, but it's there, it is four layers of two fabric. I laid out the 3D floral fabric on top of multiple layers of tulle fabric as well as the lining pink fabric and I kept on adding different layers until it reached the color grading that I needed for my skin tone and I liked. If you want at this point you can add or subtract layers depending on what you like. So once you have all of the uh, bodice pieces cut out from four layers of tool fabric, you are ready to assemble. We're going to get into the sewing part now. Uh, before we move on to the sewing machine, we have to lay out all of the pieces and pin them together just to make sure that they don't move around. When you're stitching them, this is super critical because any gaps in the fabric is going to ruin the look of your dress. So make sure that all the layers lie on top of each other very, very nicely and they are not moving around when you're stitching on your sewing machine. And now it's time to lock and load. For this project, I'm using Schmetz Microtex needles. Microtex needles are super sharp with a very fine point and they're ideal for working with tool. Thread that I'm using is also fine polyester thread that I got at Joann's for this project. I'm changing out the needle. I have a Singer sewing machine, so this process is pretty simple. And we're gonna start setting the bodice. We are going to go around different layers of fabric. I'm cutting out the excess because I kept a little bit of extra seam allowance on the side. I'm just making it neat because it's tool fabric, it's kind of transparent. When things get stitched together, you can actually see the seam lines. And I want my dress to be super neat, so I'm just going to trim off as much as I can. To attach the panels, just like we did for the inner lining dress, I'm going to just attach panels with the main bodice, pin together the curve, and I'm going to stitch it together. I'm also going to top stitch it. It looks really neat and it holds the shape. Next, I'm going to attach the shoulder seams as well as the side seams to complete the bodice. I'm going to put the bodice on the dress form just to double check everything looks good. I think it looks pretty good. So here you can see that curve of the panels actually makes the shape of the boobs. 
I think the back also looks good. Moving on to the sleeves, I'm using the basting stitch to sew the top curve of the sleeve and I'm going to pull all the gathers in the middle for this part to be nice and fluffy and the armhole part these this part is going to be plain so all of my gathers are going to be on the two and a half three inch piece on the shoulder so the four layers of tool that i've used on the inside of the sleeve is actually going to give it the structure that it needs before I attach the sleeve to the bodice piece, I'm going to close the seam shut and then pin everything. Make sure all the, the fluffy gathers are at the top of the shoulder and they line up nicely and symmetrically so that uh, the distribution of the gathers is right on top of the shoulder right here. Pinning is really important because tool is kind of slippery. Uh, the inner tool that I'm using is a little bit stiffer than the 3D floral fabric. Although that is also tool, but that's more of a softer tool, if that makes any sense. So pinning was my savior in this project. Uh, to close the sleeves, I am, since I have five different layers of tool right there, I'm just going to sew channels right in it. Um, and I'm going to slip elastic in that channel using the same layer. So I don't really have to do much over here. Um, I did not have thin elastic, unfortunately, so I'm just going to cut out uh, thin strips out of my regular elastic yeah it works it doesn't fit so uh, just cut out on the channels and right in between and just make thinner elastic to pull the elastic through the channel i'm using this loop turner <laughs> it looks like a fishing hook on a very thin long stick it looks like a kebab skewer to be honest but it's actually pretty good uh, it's quite long it's about 10 to 12 inches and it's a very thin sort of metal but it's also bendy and uh, very flexible so you can put it through very thin channels so I put the loop turner through the channel that I had made on the sleeve and I am just going to pull the elastic through it uh, so you can see that there's a little fish hook thing and I'm going to put the uh, loop turner through the channel, bring it on the other side. I just made a tiny little cut um, and I'm going to pull the elastic through it. This is actually quite helpful. This is the first time I've used a loop turner. As I'm making these videos, I'm discovering all of these unitasker tools. Um, if you don't have a loop turner and I've never had one in my life and I still got through it, uh, you could just use a safety pin, you know, it works really well. <laughs> Let's start working on the skirt now. For the tiers, I'm cutting out about 8 inches wide first tier because the distance between my waistline and my hip the width the fullness of my hip is about eight inches and that is an ideal width for the first tier of your tiered dress instead of a three-tiered skirt since i only have two yards of this fabric i have to make the most of it i have enough fabric for the width of the panels but i don't have extra fabric to extend the panel so i can't really make my tears really fluffy but that's okay because it's a 3d floral fabric anyway if i added too much of volume on the tears it's going to look really puffy like a ball gown um, and i didn't want that i wanted this to be a very wearable dress and i wanted to keep it as simple so this part is simple um, I cut out the top tiers as well as four layers of tool lining and I sandwiched them together by stitching them first and then used a basting stitch to add many ruffles as, as I could possibly manage within the fabric that I had and then attached it to the bodice and then turned it over and I did a top stitch just to make sure that everything stayed in 
the right place. Since my dress has two tiers, the second tier is the one that's going to have all the volume. For this tier, I decided to not have different layers of tulle attached with the flower fabric. I am keeping those layers separate, so I'm adding the tool fabric separately. This is where I put in a lot of volume and a lot of gathers just to give it a little fluffiness at the bottom. I had about three yards of tool to spare at this point and I am using all of that as the bottom layer tear ruffles. Once that was done, I closed out the bottom tier 3D tool fabric and made like a loop sort of a thing. Before I put in my gathers, the seam of the loop is going to go in the back. So once I was done, I made the gathers in the tool as well as the 3D tool fabric and then I'm just going to attach that to the first tier. To finish off the neckline, I'm using the seam mining lace tape which I found in pretty much the same color as the dress. The process is very simple. Uh, you attach it on the underside first. You sew the seams together and then you flip it over. Once you flip it over, you can either stitch it with your sewing machine. I did one hem and over stitch with my sewing machine and then i put it on my dress form and i hemmed the outer layer of the lace and that actually gave it a very nice clean finish and i really liked it for the embellishment i decided to use uh, simone rocha's signature look which is ruffles on the shoulders and i'm going to cut out strips of tulle and I'm going to use the gathering foot on my sewing machine to simplify the process as much as I can. If you don't have a gathering foot, that's perfectly fine. You can just use a regular sewing machine on the basting stitch and just pull it out. Using the gathering foot is pretty simple. All you do is you just screw it on your, just thread it normally. The settings for the gathering for stitch length is pretty long and the tension is quite loose. Sandwich the layers of two. I'm using two or three just to give it a little more volume than a single layer. And I'm just going to run it through the machine and it is going to give me these beautiful, beautiful gathers. So this piece is going to be applied uh, right on the shoulder part. For this, I'm just going to pin the frilly bit right here and it is going to go down right here. Not all the way because I don't want it over my boobs. I just want it in the shoulder. So it's going to be about four inches from the top of the shoulder and the same amount in the back. I'm using a very long length of gold red ribbon so that it hangs on both sides and I'm going to put that ribbon in the middle and stitch over it and let the rest of the ribbon hang. All of this is done in one stitch on your machine. This is not very difficult to do. All you have to do is just plan for it and just pin everything together nicely and just bring it to your sewing machine. It's super easy to do. I also attached ball frill on the neckline because I found the neckline to be quite bare. So I added the frill on the neckline as well. Moving on to the embellishment, I'm going to attach bows right where the frilly part ends in a and then I'm going to embellish faceted beads. They are loosely done just like Simone Rocha does. They look so beautiful. They're super easy to attach and I'm just going to create a, 
a long layer. It looks so pretty. So what do you think? I love this dress. It is so pretty. I'm so happy with this dress. Did you like it? Please comment below and let me know. Please hit like and subscribe to my channel. I post videos every week. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. And now the final reveal.